Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kim Barrett Show. I am your host, Kim Barrett, and on today's episode, we have the lovely Miss Heidi Anderson joining us. Now, if you're a business owner who has ever wanted to know how can you tap into PR, maybe you want to know how you can get your foot in the door somewhere, or you really want to focus on how can you tap into your audience so you can grow, show up every day, and amplify your business, this is the episode for you. And of course, if we can help you market your business, head over to marketingmogul.com.au. We've got all the things you need right there. But until then, let's jump into the show. Heidi, thank you so much for joining us. Who am I waving to, Larry? Everyone. Hi. Hi. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So I always like to start my podcast same way every time, which is Heidi. If I met you and we're at a party and we're drinking Maui and just chillaxing, and I said, what is it that you actually do? Uh, What's your go-to answer? Fuck. I don't know anymore. Oh, am I allowed to swear? We are now. Guys, <laughs> nice editing, don't worry. Don't believe me that. Just keep rolling. <laughs> keep rolling. That is such a hard question because when I worked in radio, I would have gone, yeah, I do breakfast radio on 92.9. And now I, I, I stumble. Literally, like I'm doing now. And I try every different way to explain it. And I think to myself, you know how they tell us in business we've got to niche down and know like know our business in one one sentence? I'm still working that out. What about like two sentences? Okay. So I now teach women to PR the shit out of themselves. For those who don't know what PR is, public relations. Mm -hmm. And I teach a whole new method. Like I believe the, you know, so much of it is bullshit and built on lies. And I believe that public relations is a really exciting, fun thing. And when I worked in it, I didn't. So I now coach women. (laughs) See, long answer. I now coach women to um, build brands without a huge marketing budget, making noise around their business and PRing the shit out of themselves. So does that even make sense? Kind of. <laughs> it does. Why is it, why do you think it's important then? Like what's the benefit for anyone that's out there and it's like, oh, as you said, there's a lot of myths, there's a lot of BS around yeah. PR and the benefits and how it works and whatnot. Why do you think it makes a difference and what sort of difference does it make for people's businesses? Oh, it's a fucking game changer. And, you know, like for me, I feel like, I guess you could put me in the category of business coaching as well. And I feel like so many people these days, I believe in coaches. I believe in coaching. I have them now, especially being in this whole new world. It's so exciting. And like, you know, you and I spoke about it. I'm just like, whoa, I didn't even know this world existed. But a lot of people really think that it's important to go to a business coach. And I believe it is too. But they get all these strategies and everything, but when they have a product to launch or they have their business to launch and all this stuff, they have no connected audience. And so for me, the beauty of public relations and making noise and hyping up your thing is so important and people miss doing that before. So all of a sudden they've got this product and they've gone to this business coach, but they've got no one to sell it to. And they don't teach you that exciting, fun part around it. And I think that's what I love to show people that, you know, I believe public relations is connection with your audience, building relationships like public relations, and then thinking outside the box. So thinking outside the box of making that noise and, you know, not just relying on traditional media anymore. You know, having worked in the media industry myself for 15 years, 15 plus years in London and in Perth recently in Breakfast Radio, you know, I know the inside out and out and I know how you're going to get noticed but I also don't believe that that's the sole way that you should be making noise around your business and connecting and finding audience because at the end of the day most of your audience is probably on social media these days as you know but also it's out there like off the screens you know in shopping centers at the beach and so that's why I love to do like really outside the box stuff to make noise mm-hmm. yeah so what's neat for someone listening and they're like going, okay, cool. That makes sense that I need to have that almost that raving fan crowd base out there kind yeah, of getting super excited fan. about it. Uh, yeah, super fans. So if, if that's the case, it's like, what's, what's the first step for someone? If they're going, cool, I have a great product or service. Maybe I'm getting coaching from someone and yeah. I need to think about doing this. Like, how do you, start, how do you help someone identify, number one, if it's the right time? Because I'm sure mm-hmm. the timing is definitely yeah. going to play a part. Yeah. But number two, like what sort, because as you mentioned, it's like 
there's a myriad of different ways you can go and get PR. Yeah. How do I know which one's going to be right for me? Like, what's yeah. some of the things that people can start thinking about? I mean, they obviously got to call me. Exactly. Don't mind me. at the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Anyway. 0402. No. <laughs> yeah. um, or slide into my DMs or stalk me. I give heaps of free tips and stuff away. But I think, like, the you know, the, the big thing is public relations is relations, relationships. And so many of us just want that. Oh, they want everyone to be buying their product and they want everyone to be noticing and hearing them. And, you know, yes, I want that for you too. We've got to build the relationships, you know, like, and so for me that I feel like is such an integral part. Like I said, you can teach strategy, you can do this, but if you're not building relationships, like I worked in public relations in London for a good couple of years and I learned so much. I learned nothing at uni, by the way, when I studied communications at uni, everything I learned on the job Sorry if my professor is watching this back. <laughs> I really liked you, Donald. Um, but, like, you know, what I learned and what I look back at, like, I was selling my soul to get, you know, I was working in an agency to get, um, you know, airtime or, you know, re- like p- um, press in the paper and stuff for my clients. But I wasn't building relationships. And so, you know, I, that's why I felt like I was selling my soul. So if you feel like you're selling your fucking soul, you probably are because you have missed the most integral part, which is a relationship. And so if you want to get published in a paper, if you want to get published on TV, if you wanted to get on a radio show when I was on a, you know, on my show, you had to build that relationship, you know. you got to think they get their emails blow up every single day with fucking boring press releases. Like I'll show you a new way of how you could get noticed. You know, like, so I got my, like, made huge, like, epic steps in my career because of relationships. You know, the relationship I built built with the listener, with the audience, and the relationship that I built with my bosses, with, um, you know, with everyone in the building and that kind of thing. And I think that's what people need to remember is you need to be building your relationships. So, yeah, it's all great having a social media it's all great getting your name in the paper and everything, but like, what are you going to do with once you get published in the paper? How can you make noise and make all your raving fans really excited about that on your socials? Well, they're not going to give two shits if you're not connected to them and if you haven't built those relationships. So for the people listening, they're like, yeah, but Heidi, you work at the radio station. Yes. Of course, of course you can make friends. I mean, you've got a, <laughs> you got given this whole audience to talk to and then every day you're going into an office with people that have influence in the space of yeah. and communication. How do I get started? How, what's, the, what's the thing that I can do to start off with to build a relationship and who should I be building it with? Do I need to mm-hmm. look, like scope out on LinkedIn who the boss is of? 92.9 or is yeah. there like a different way for me to do that show the fuck up in your business and that's what people refuse to do they want to pay all this money for a business coach or you know they like think that's the only way but if you start showing up in your business you know what i showed up in my very first breakfast radio job in bunbury and I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know how many people were listening to the radio show. You know, I didn't just get given that audience, but I worked for it, you know, like by, um, you know, um, building the, like building the relationships beforehand. The reason why I got that job was because I thought outside the box. And when I was at radio school, I sent my shoe to the radio station and said, I've got one foot in the door. Now I'm, you know, um, I can't wait to get the next one in. You know, and it was stuff like that, that like then they were like, oh my God, like she's thinking outside the box. It was a relationship. I'd get on the phone. I'd make, like, I'd make them know who I am. If you're not showing up and you're just hiding, going like, oh, what else can I do now? And and, because believe me, people have amazing ideas, especially the women that I'm working with. They have incredible ideas. You need to start showing up, coming out from behind the logo. I don't even have a logo. I realized this week, I don't have a fucking (laughs) logo. Like for my whole business, and I've got over 60 women in my program, I've made my radio wage in my first year of business. It's been hard and challenging, but, you know, people need, you need to show up and you need to actually build those relationships by talking, like send deep, like, you know, sliding, like you've got new followers, like send them a video message back and say like, oh my God, thank you so much for following me. How did you find me? I always ask them, you know, have they had a stalk yet? What have they found? Have they found my cock candle yet? (laughs) That's a story for another day. (laughs) You know, like when, like, so do you know what I mean? Like, it's so important that we like, and you could read, if you rang the, the radio station, right. Because no one else probably is doing that. You know, like it's, it's thinking of those things. And yes, I was gifted 
with a breakfast radio show and so I built my profile and everything but everything that I've built over the last 10 years is literally what I teach people to do now on how I got where I was how I how you can talk to people because the thing that people miss the most is connection and relatability you know like you know you got somewhere like you're in this amazing business right but you know what happens is sometimes and I'm not saying this is you but what happens sometimes is like coaches especially or experts or you know we forget that we still need to relate and connect if they're the people that we want to talk to you know five years ago if it's me like we've got to go back to that person um and I think like especially with mums and stuff that have all these amazing ideas I I meet so many mums that have these amazing ideas they forget to share the relatable parts of their journey and you know storytell and I think you know there's so much in storytelling that people don't do and that's literally just you behind the scenes with your baby if this is a baby product that you want to put out there like where's the relatability of you, you know, and then connecting with your audience. Does that make sense? Yeah, I love it. So I go on such a rant sometimes. There's, there's two parts, right? So yeah. there's the connecting with the audience, and then there's yeah. the, there's connecting with the platform that you can generate PR. On. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you shared little tidbits on both there. So for someone, if they go great, now I've got an idea. Yeah. How do they assess? Like, cool, like I'm gonna I'm gonna put a foot uh, in the door. Yeah, uh, you know something like that. I want to do something like I've got a cool idea like that. I want to get noticed. Yeah. How do they assess the platform to go after? Yeah. And then how do they find out? Because as you say, like let's just say, if I didn't know that you said there's certain bosses at the radio that I could speak to, I would I may not know to go and think about hitting, hitting those people up. Mm. Like, do I just go, dear boss, no to point nine, send my shoot? You yeah. know what I mean, like, how do I then go and find those people? Yeah. Well, I think too, like. Again, we have so much at our fingertips now. Like, you know, when I started in radio, Facebook and all that was just coming out. (laughs) You know, you can literally go on Twitter and majority of people are sit on Twitter now or social media. Like, you know, just here locally in Perth, all of the people who work in the paper in Perth all have profiles on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So open the paper and literally find out who has written a story recently, like in the business section about a mum who's just had an amazing breakthrough with her product. Go, oh fuck, that's a person I need to go stalk, find them on Instagram and then, you know, contact them or start building a relationship, just start liking their stuff. Start like showing up in their DMs, liking their story. Do you know what I mean? Like that's why I believe like showing up is so important and showing your face because that's how we build connection. But, you know, like I think back in the day, right, like no, you didn't know who anyone was on the radio, you didn't know who anyone was in the paper, but now people have online profiles and it's so easy as you as buying the paper or buying the magazine that you like or jumping online if it's, um, I was going to say girlfriend magazine. I don't know why that came to my head. But like, Does that still exist? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think so. But, you know, like um, what's a big one these days? See, I guess what I teach now, which I believe is – that you can confidently put yourself out there and you don't need to rely on media anymore because a lot of the time, if you did get press, great, not saying it's a bad thing or you did get, um, you know, on, on a TV show or whatever, a lot of the time you're speaking to a cold audience. Mm. So I teach you what you can do with that. Like, so if you do have that moment, how can you make that a massive moment? So it's not just this one moment in the paper or on a TV show. How can you keep repurposing that, making noise on your platforms, in your business, like really taking it to the next level? But to me, this is more important right now, me and you having a chat like this, for me, my business, my profile, than me getting like, you know, the the um, the Australian or whatever, like, you know, the West Australian or whatever to cover a story on me you know, because to be honest, probably my audience aren't really reading the paper. So not saying that it's a bad thing. People think like, oh, they're in the paper, like they're famous. Or they got on the radio, like they're famous. I believe that, you know, this conversation here is so much more important. So people should be pitching themselves podcasts. They should be thinking about how they can collaborate with other women on, you know, not about competition, like literally where are all your um, competitors, you know, like, oh, sorry, where are all your ideal clients? They're probably with your competitors. So how can you collaborate with them? Can you do a live? Can you guys come together? You know, I got told this the other day, like, you know, when you go to a car yard, you walk down the car yard, they're all lined up next to each other because they know where their ideal clients are. They're going to be going to the next car yard, you know. So 
it's the same thing. Like I believe so much in collaboration. So show up on how can you do a collaboration on a live on Instagram? How can you do a workshop with someone else? You know, like how can you start to think outside the traditional norms? Because people think, oh, I've got my name in the paper. I've got on the radio. Oh, my God, I'm famous. It's such a big deal. Like, I think that, you know, PR is so much more than that. Yeah, 100%. And also the the limitation or the issue that I see sometimes with is that you can't control what the narrative is. So for example, one of my friends yeah. um, cured herself of cancer by eating pineapple and taking a certain, um, uh, like a certain uh, treatment protocol. But the thing, wow. the only thing that they honed in on, one of the things it's she mentioned fun. was that she ate pineapple. Because it was something that like it, it ate away at the external cells, which allowed the full treatment to actually work better. Yeah. So at the end of it, they're like, we can't just have these crazy people on TV talking about curing themselves by eating pineapple. After she's done her whole thing, so at the end, basically yeah. completely pulls down her credibility. Yeah. Because and they had this other expert come in mm-hmm. because that how they wanted to do it. So yes, she got the like the publication. Yeah. Yes, she got the feature. However, she couldn't control. What actually was the outcome that came through? Yeah, that's and that's one of the reasons why I also started podcasts and things like that yeah. because I'd rather have, as you mentioned, like if you get something or a feature, that's cool, but then you have to be able to leverage it. So for me, yeah, I leverage everything into podcasts into our own content because I can control how it's said, what's said, yeah. what it looks like, but I can't do that if I go and get put in the newspaper or I'm on the pulse or I'm on the radio or something yeah. at the time. It's impossible for me to do. Yeah, oh my God, 100%. And that's what I solely believe as well. Like how can you, it all comes back to you controlling the narratives on your pages. And, you know, that's why, like I've worked in the media, I know what they go for and all that kind of, you know, I know what will hook them in. But also like I'll be, like I've been brutally honest with so many people, your traditional commercial radio shows, do you know how many emails a day they get to support charities, to support this, to help this person, to get this interview on here? And you you think it's a brilliant idea, and it probably fucking is. It's probably one of the best ideas ever. But if they ha- don't really are uh, interested in it or, you know, like you've got to remember, like they're doing a show that's entertainment. Mm. So a lot of the time it's like what are the number one things that everyone was talking about? Say The Bachelor was on last night, you know, that kind of stuff. And I think people don't realise that. And yeah. that was where I really wanted to change the game. And, you know, I, I wanted to have real conversations. I wanted to meet, like, real people that had life-changing stories that, you know, could, like, that was the shit that I wanted to, to hear. Um, but I thought of when you were talking about that, you Steph Gorton, who we both know, and she's one of my good mates, when her story went, she wrote an article for Mamma Mia, which is this is what I say to my girls as well. Like, if you want to get out there, tell your story through a Mamma Mia and write in and you get to control the narrative because it's your story. So her story went viral about how she was dumped by um, her boyfriend. Anyway, you have to go read the article. It's still on her page. But I noticed that, when it was going viral, like I said to Steph, like, what are you doing with it? And like, how are you bringing it back to you and your coaching business now? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was like, get on a live and literally talk about it. Like now that it's going viral. And I think, you know, what happens is sometimes when we aren't controlling the narrative and they do go, but that's when we do sometimes feel a little bit of shame or embarrassment or like, this is not what I wanted to say. So it's all good and well to get out there and get it. And if they do change it, you can bring it back on your platform. And I think that's what's really important for, like, how are you going to hype the fuck out of it and make it yours so it's not really a Channel 7 story or it's not really, you know, like the West story or whatever. It ultimately is your story at the end of the day. Yeah. And it's an element of, like, I did a um, Instagram live on this the other day. It's like, it's an element of proof having that in there which can back you up. As, but then as long as you bring it back, and that's, yeah. to be honest, like, that's why I love um, Facebook ads the most because, as you mentioned, I don't know if my audience is reading the West. I don't know if they're listening to certain shows. I don't know if they're watching certain TV. Like most people I know don't have TV plugged into a normal antenna and watch any general yeah. things. They watch a replay or they're just yeah. watching a Netflix. Yes. So for me, I only have Netflix and Apple TV. I can't, I like, sometimes I like, I like message my, my the team and I'm like, how can I watch like the AF? Like, well, there's a footy game. I was like, how can I watch it today? <laughs> and then they're like, oh, you're just going to like change the channel. I was like, I don't have a normal TV. I need to like live stream it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I, was like, I, I, I don't watch any of this. Yeah. Someone's on there. Like I know there's um, a few uh, of our clients and, and friends that always get on like the polls and things yeah. like that. And I was like, I, I'm so excited for them when I see it on their stories. But I was like, 
I've never watched an episode because my TV, I can't, I can't yeah. watch it. My TV doesn't plug in. Yeah, and you know, it's a part of Nine News as well. Mm. And so what I always say is like you're then being controlled by someone else as well. And, you know, I think having worked in radio myself and I felt like I was so much myself, you know, and I feel like when people meet me, they're like, oh, you're so much like you. So that's a really awesome thing. But I now I'm out, I'm like, oh, my God, there's so much control again of that narrative of who, you know, Heidi, you've got to fit this certain Good criteria and box. Yeah. yeah. And whereas now, like, you know, I've said fuck like 50,000 times already. Yeah. And, you know, maybe that's because I wasn't allowed to say fuck for 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's all coming awesome. out now. But do you know what I mean? If you get on the pulse or whatever, you're like, they, you have to be a certain way. And I go on there. I love the guys down there. And again, like for me, it's about a relationship with Channel 9, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's fun. Like it's actually just a little bit of fun too but at the end of the day you know like it's not the be all and end all and a lot of the time with the polls then probably not everyone is watching it at the time but they'll watch it on Facebook afterwards so that's why it can be how can you then carry that over to, onto your pages and make the most of yeah, it you know 100%. and that's sort of like a little tip if I was on that this is what I would do so if I got to be featured on the polls um, people that run the polls if you're watching you probably are I mean you're probably watching every week so, I wear cool vests. I, can, I, can um, I think he might be pitching for I'm living his... my best life on the, on the post. I think uh, you might be pitching yourself here. No, that's right. I've got my own channel. This is, K, like, this is uh, Channel KB. I don't care. But what I would do, if that was me, so if I had got a feature on there, what I would do is take a snippet of me being on there yeah. and use it as part of my B-roll. Then I would run a video ad because I know that I can target my ideal audience that features on the intro an amazing yeah. piece of B-roll that shows me being on TV, shows me in any of my PR features, and I pump yeah. that out, and like, even if I started with a dollar a day, to my ideal market, and they're like, oh, shit, this Kim guy is actually awesome. Yeah. He's, been, he's been on these things, and then what follows is whatever I want to say. So if someone's watching the Kim Barrett show, if you're only listening on audio, go to Facebook or YouTube, and you'll see, at the beginning, there's a whole highlight list. There's me yeah. interviewing all the top people. Yeah. Same when I go speaking, like I spoke on stage in front of like, hundreds and thousands of people in different locations all over the world. The main reason I did that was to get the clip of my B-roll of doing that. I probably didn't, well, I did, but I probably didn't necessarily get direct business from it yeah. immediately. But now that I have all those clips, if someone's like, oh, we need an amazing speaker, and I send in my promo reel, which has got me speaking in France, in Canada, in America, like all over yeah. the place, they're like, oh, this like this is awesome. And then what comes after that is whatever I want. Yeah. So I have control over. So I'm using those parts as my leverage to position myself by proof because I can make a claim that I was on these places, but I back it up with undeniable proof. Then it becomes fact. Yeah. Then everyone has to. Well, he must be good at speaking because he's he's been on those stages. That person must be someone noteworthy. So all our clients and friends who are on the pulse and could you do that? Right. That's what you should be doing. Yeah. That little snippet. I mean, you already got me thinking of other ideas that I could do from <laughs> yeah. that. Like you know, just with the stuff that I've done because I've inter- I've interviewed like Kim Kardashian. Mm. I've sat down with, um, you know, Robbie Williams, literally like this. And Remember just, when we were talking about you launching your podcast? Yeah. Stuff, right? Oh, my God. Imagine I, that as your intro reel to your podcast. Yeah. It's like you. It's like Robbie Williams, Kim Kardashian, yeah. Kim Barrett. All three Ellen amazing, DeGeneres. You know, Is all, that her name? <laughs> yes, like, all those four people that we just mentioned, obviously in the same category. So they're yeah. all amazing people. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Like having that as like a little roll through, then they'd be like, oh, like. This is a this is a this is a podcast. I need to, and, and do you know what? I think too, like as much as I'm having an aha moment here, guys. As this much is as recall, I'm losing my charge. Yeah. <laughs> but as much as like you know, because I am all about not relying on the traditional media. I'm all about like women championing themselves because they so struggle to do that. But you know, we've both sat here and boasted about you know things that we've done and celebrated what we've done, and that's what gets you connected with people as well. Because you know, I need to go change on my website. I'm literally working on it now like interviewed Robbie Williams sat down with Kim Mm. Kardashian you know our Kim Kardashian interview went viral around the whole world Mm. because of what we chose to do with her and again it's that I think having your finger on the pulse so when we like a lot of the stuff that I learned was from radio like when we were given a radio show we didn't have a budget you know as much as you think radio oh it's glitz and glamour and it's money and all that no we were a brand new radio show when I first started in Perth so we had to make noise and like think about how we could get people to come listen to our show because they were, you know, we were the new guys on the block. How could we get them to come listen to our show without a budget? You know, so that's what I teach people now. And I remember with Kim Kardashian, she was releasing this perfume and, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey was Mm. out at the time. It was like the it movie. So, again, thinking about like what everyone was talking about, 
Kim Kardashian in Australia, we got her, we got her to read a script, like the, the script from Fifty Shades of Grey, like you know how sexy it is, and we got her to insert her um, perfume in the sexy parts. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. then it was literally on a new like it was massive it was so fucking huge and you know from that it's like how do you continue to make noise about that you know and this is what i say to people if you've got a if you've got something in your business that's like a an event right you've got and you've got to try and sell it to your audience try and sell it differently every single day how can you repurpose stuff and that was the same with like the kim kardashian how can we keep writing this so we would share you know the different things that we were like we would get on and pretend to be the news readers and like you know there was all different things that you can do with that and i think that that's where people, everyone has the creative ability. Like before I got into radio, I was working in public relations in London and, you know, I still didn't know what I really loved. I always had this passion for radio. But like I had to train my brain to think content, yeah. right? You've had to train your brain to think the way, you know, what you just shared before with the polls. Like I think that's what people don't realise is you can do this too. And yeah. like you can start to think about that content differently every day, especially on your social media. I hate just talking social media because, like I said, I feel like you can make noise and everything out there so in so many other different ways. Like, But like we're saying, it's like that's what you own. So it's like that's the yeah. spot that you can that you Yeah, can do. yeah, exactly. And, like, we all should have a foundational platform. And I think that's, for me, like, you know, it's Instagram for me, you know. I've got to highly encourage you to change that. <gasps> make sure that you do like your website because – Instagram takes away your account, then you screw. I know. And remember, you had to help me with my Facebook. Do you know how many people in this last week, because uh, I put out a post because we had um, some lockdown stuff here in Perth, and yeah. I was like, happy to help businesses. Uh, at the moment, I've got free time. Nearly every single day, several messages about help me with my Instagram back, help me get my Instagram back. I have 57,000 followers. I have 500,000 followers. What's happening with them? Everyone's just losing access from different bits and pieces. Why? So, oh, my God. This gives me anxiety. It can be any reason. It can be people reporting other accounts as fake. It can be the data, the things that share, and people go, oh, this is um, against our terms and conditions. So it's like that's why I always say to people, it's like your website, even though it's more old school yeah. in the world of the internet, it's like it needs to be the core place for people to go to get your stuff because – if that happens, because then they just go, oh, I used to quit the internet. Yeah. If they're only fully there, they're like, no, she's probably Guys, not. I will never quit the fucking <laughs> yeah. internet. Go to her website, Except, guys, it'll be in the show notes, all right? Like, I do sometimes, you know, like, and, you know, I think we all do, we all have moments where we do want to quit the internet. Yeah. And I think, like, that's one thing, too, to remember in business as well. Like, you can take time out and you don't need to, as much as I say shop, you don't need to shop every day. So, you know, maybe I will quit the internet one day. Well, you see, that's the thing. It's like, you might quit posting on a certain platform. Yeah. Which is the thing, because everyone's like, it's all different parts, but they're like, and everyone's like, oh, I get over, like, oh, I haven't been online. I was like, I would argue that every person says that they haven't been online has been online. Yeah. Because they're probably on Google Maps, they're probably on Uber Eats, they're like, they've gone on the internet, interconnected web. Yeah. But they're not posting on a certain social platform. Yeah. And that's what people are like, oh, that's that's online. It's like, well, no, you probably like, you might check WhatsApp and message your family in a group chat, mm. like, that's, that's social media. Yeah. So it's, but it's about the feeling of it's like, well, me being on and yeah. in there because it is, it is hard to not to show up, but it's like, it's hard to want to necessarily sometimes share every moment of what's going on and mm. things because it can be heavy. And that's why, again, like circling back to a little bit of what we said before, that's why I love ads because for me, my ads are on 24 seven. Yeah. Kim doesn't have to be. I might only post two stories on a weekend and they all suck, yeah. but my ads will get people, me in front of people. And that's the benefit as well is that if you can build an asset that does things long term for you, like I said before, it's hard for us to get out there and talk about ourselves. Like mm -hmm. I said, we casually, I like, we throw some things in for fun of what we've done here yeah. because it's what we're doing. However, we build an asset that shows that to people every day. We don't have to, I don't talk about myself anymore because I have those things yeah. that kind of do it for me. Yeah. Same as like what I do. It needs to though, FYI. I need to, but so <laughs> Hardy hasn't seen enough of my ads yet to. No, <laughs> but also I think like you. Um, you come across like you share stories and stuff in your podcast and that so people can relate to you through here like you yeah. you know um, but like I think that's where a lot of the time people do miss that like they do I think still I mean Facebook ads I don't really use Facebook ads what would that do to my business if I used them it would blow it up would it yeah. maybe we need to get onto that yeah no literally it's like it's because I'm all organic that's where I've been yeah. everything I've grown is organic so it's, it's like fuel to the fire. Like one of our sales guys, he loves dad jokes and giving analogies and he's just getting better at giving analogies. But he's like, he's like, if your business, it's like you have a fire 
And then he's like, but uh, he's trying to give an explanation of like why ads are good. And shout out to Shaddy, this is a, this is a great one. <laughs> he's like, you have a fire and you build your you build your business at the beginning. You put the sticks on and then you're like with a stone and you're working hard and you get the fire going. Yeah. Facebook ads is chucking a whole bunch of fuel on top of that. And he's like, and then you just burn down the forest. And I was like, bro, we probably shouldn't tell people that it's burning down a forest, <laughs> especially in WA. It's not a good yeah. idea to link yeah. uh, that to uh, forest fires. <laughs> but it is true in the fact that like, if you have something that works, it's like it's an accelerant. Yeah. Because it's faster, because organic. You can't control. Like, mm. there's some people like, oh, X people, X amount of people visit me every day or watch me every day, which is cool, but you can't control it. Yeah. Whereas with ads, it's like predictable. So I'm like, hey, cool. If I want to go from X to Y, I just turn up the budget. Yeah. And then I can scale. Like, same with like, we're launching, my partner and I are launching a cafe. I've only posted terrible photos and videos that are not necessarily like on brand and lined up. And we have a PR person who's going to help us with the launch of that. She's like, yeah, I'll, I'll get out. I need to get my photographer out to help you with this. And I was like, well, look, to be honest, I just did what I do best, which is ads. Yeah. I already have like 300 followers, not even open. I haven't posted any food pictures. Like, and it's like, and every person I know lives within a one mile radius of where our cafe is because that's how I run the ads. Yes. So every single person, when I start posting good stuff, I know they're going to want to come along. Mm. So for me, I can use that kind of uh, knowledge that I have already around that to be able to go, cool, I can put a little bit of fuel in the fire before we've even started putting the sticks on for this yeah. one because I know what it can do. So um, from this chat, I think people will be like, well, we don't, don't worry about me, guys, and public relations. I think we need to all go over to ads. <laughs> don't, like, forget everything that we've said today. No, it all works, it all works together, guys. No, it all works together. I mean, but but I'm like, oh, well, I want to know more about ads. Yeah, so. but, you, but you didn't start with that, right? So you started no. with the public. Like, you started yeah. with what you did best. And that's why it's like everyone's going to use their strength. Mm. So, for example, for all the ladies that are in your group that have already been getting epic results, yeah. they now go and throw a little bit of gasoline on the fire. Mm. It's just going to enhance it. Yeah. So that's why, as you mentioned in the beginning, like you can't go and launch something if you don't know what the if you don't know what the product is, if you don't know what the offer is, you don't know who your offer is for. There's no point in doing anything. Yeah. But as soon as you have that, it's like cool. Then you can build some sticks. You can get the fire started with by doing some organic work yeah. because it's like you can spend money or time at the beginning. Most of us spend time to grow our business, mm. and then when we've got a little bit of extra money, as I said, dollar a day, whatever you want to do, then you go boom. And yeah. That's when you get the big, yeah, the big spark. Fuck yeah, I'm ready for a spa. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I want to mention though, because if there are people listening that do struggle to celebrate themselves, like I feel like it's so important in your business to like to share your wins, you know, like Dude, to the funny thing is mostly it's only insurance. Isn't it? Everyone it's that's so everyone that sucks. Like yesterday oh. we were on we were doing a call with our masterminders and they're like sharing their wins. And they're like, oh, can you like not share um one of them was like, can I not have this part shared. And I was like, well, I was like, I haven't. And he's like, oh, but you, you did something like this and it kind of shared what we're doing. And I was like, why didn't you want to celebrate that? And then yeah. he's like, oh, why don't I want to celebrate that? Like, yeah. And he's like, you know, in for example, in America, it's like, it's whoever has the loudest voice wins. It's like, you know, I've done this, like, hooray for me. Whereas in Australia, it's like, oh, successful. Yeah, like yeah, hard under my vest. Yeah, like, it's, it's like, yeah, yeah, I look very good at it. Yeah. yeah, like you... Probably can't hear that. Sorry for the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> and for those on the podcast, just so you know, he was hiding under his vest. I was hiding under my vest. That's why you, can't, you couldn't hear me clearly. See, that's why I'm in radio, because remember, we had to, like, describe stuff. I'm a video guy, yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, and, you know, it's so funny, because so many people I work with as well, they don't share testimonials. Mm. And I'm like, mate... That's someone else cheering about your business. No one is going to cheer louder, like, about your business than you. And that's why I believe, like, you know, necessarily sometimes we don't need the TV, the radio, all that. We just need you being proud, putting yourself out there. And then comes in your testimonials, that your super fans, the people who will do that for you. Our businesses won't succeed without super fans, but people will see that. Like, I bought stuff because of testimonials. You know, like that's why, because I've heard and I've related to it. So make sure your testimonials are relating to who you want your ideal client to be. And it, it does give people a sense of inspiration yes. and aspiration that they could do it. Yeah. And that's why, again, same thing. I'm like, cool. Like, why doesn't everyone like share your wins? And I think sometimes people get a little bit worried about either um, that client that they share, worrying and things like that. And I'm like, same with me. If I have a good conversation with someone, I ask them to message it to me or to yeah, slide it to me. And then yeah. I, but I always I always cover their name. Yeah. Because I'm like, if you don't like 
you probably don't, you may or may not want me to share it. And if you want the publicity for it, I will give it, like, I will yeah. give you a name and, and yeah. pass it everywhere. But if you don't, I like to think that everyone would want their bit of privacy, so I always blank it out, but then they can still see the statistics. And then you can yeah. see me responding like, heck yeah, well yes. done, et cetera. Yeah, see, with mine, I, I'll do a bit of both. So I'll ask people if I can share it and if they're happy to, and, you know, I say, do you want me to tag you in it? Do you want me not? Some people are really happy for that. And then... I always ask for video testimonial as well, especially with Instagram, if you've heard the news this week. You know, like it's going to be a video. It's a plat video platform now. That's what they're saying. So, you know, I always get them to do a video. Like, And, you know, with my program, literally when people start showing up and they start building that confidence, they're happy to give you a video testimonial. You know, like to me, they are so important. And like I said, cheering about myself, like at the end of the day, like, I need people to come into my program to feed my baby, <laughs> to, you know, to pay my bills, like, you know, to keep building my business, to keep like doing what I'm doing. So at the end of the day, like, cause you know, some people I get, I got one of my girls, Oh, aren't they sick of me talking about it yet? I'm like, the one thing I will say to you, if you think that people are starting to be sick of what you're saying, they're only just hearing about it. And as well, it's like, we all feel like it's going to happen. It's like, look, I've got, you know, a thousand followers. So they almost be sick of it. It's like, only probably. 10 or 50 of them have seen it. Like, exactly. Most of the time they don't. Like, yeah. They don't see it. So it's like, yes. everyone's like, oh, this like, we will get sick of it like 10 times earlier than before anyone else does. Yeah. Because they haven't seen it yet. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, but that's why a great way to like start thinking creatively as well. Like how can you repurpose that in a different way? How can you, you know, if you're promoting that event, how can you get people that are already bought it, buying your tickets or whatever? How can you get them to celebrate you when you use that? You know, there's all different ways. And that's, you know, like whenever I go into launch mode or anything like that, I think of how I can sell my program daily on my, you know, on my website, on my emails, on my stories, all in a different way. And then we kind of repurpose it throughout, but it's different every single day. Yeah. It's not just a promo. And like I say, the same fucking boring copy that everyone writes, like it's got substance. It's got my story and it. it's got that connection, those connection pieces. And then there'll be other days where I'll share my knowledge, you know, and also share stories about like how with a shoe through the front door, like, do you know what I mean? Those kind of things. But people forget and so they just go in and they panic and they just go straight into like promo post, promo post, promo post. Yeah, so true. So true. So true. And guys, oh. we're, we're getting towards the end of that time because oh, I feel like we... otherwise we're going to be like, this is going to be a triple episode if we, uh, oh my God. If we keep going. And you know I love a chat. I know, I know. That's so why I was like, this is going to be my <laughs> hardest one yet to keep concise oh yeah keep that yeah. you know the radio girl keep yeah. her like <laughs> keep uh, her in between the lines yeah i'm gonna give her parameters in their box <laughs> but okay so the last question that i have for you which is the same for everyone yeah which is is there a question that i didn't ask you that oh, i should have God, there's so many like really like i'm such an interesting person i know i know <laughs> It's, it's obvious. I mean, you could have asked about my son. You could have asked about big. I went in big brother. Well, that's what I mean. What, what no, should I? I'm only, I'm only winding up. The, the question oh. that I didn't ask that I should have. You could. It could be one of those. Do you know what? I don't really like. I guess for me, my respect of like you know having been a broadcaster myself, I feel like I always go in and trust the person that I'm going. On, on air or you know in oh, with right. yeah. yeah like and so and I trust myself now and so I don't feel like there's anything that you should have asked me except for maybe like you know where they can find me but I already threw that in there because I'm good at PRing myself where, where at you? underscore Heidi Anderson find me on Instagram slide into my DMs or so you could have lined me up for that person <laughs> no, but like, do you know what I mean? Like, so I don't think there is. What have what have people said in the past? Like, they, they, norm, they normally they normally go like, oh, cool, good question, and then they're like, oh, maybe it's like some people have been very blatant where they're like, oh, well, you should have asked me about my new product that I'm launching. So blah 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 blah. <laughs> I was like, well, of course I should have. Or then, <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, I get you. Is there anything that you wish you'd asked me? Well, I'm the question master, so I get to like, no, I'm the master of the question. So yeah, I but you're also the like the time manager as well. So if time wasn't an issue, is there anything that you would ask me? See, I've thrown it back on you. So, yeah, I've, I've got plenty of, I've got, if you've got like A's, something I've juicy, got, do we want to if finish? If you've got A's, I've juicy. got Q's, you know? okay. Um What was, well, like, what's the one, uh, it's probably not super juicy, but like, what was the one biggest piece of PR that you think you've got? It doesn't have to be bigger than like, reached 10 bajillion people yeah. like Kim Kardashian. But like, what was one thing where you're like, the execution of that and the aftermath of that was epic? 
That's a, that is a good question. Um, and that's a hard question because I guess for me, there's so many things that I have done in my career and also in wanting to change society in through the things that I've done and the noise that I've made around things that I'm like, oh, there's so many. But like the Kim Kardashian thing, like it was always when people would say, like, who's the most famous person you've spoken to on the radio? And you're like, I would always be, or oh, your favourite interview, I'd always be like, my nan. <laughs> like, because, you know, she's dead now. And like, you know, I got to do that. So it was, wasn't really that, although Robbie Williams is maybe. Um, but probably the moment that changed me that I really understood how to pee other shit out of something was when I was working in Bunbury and I had been on the radio for two years. I'd been showing up, although I like didn't really feel like I was any good, but I kept showing up. And I remember I spoke openly about my body image issues for the first time. And that was where I realized the power of connection. But from that 200, uh, our phone, our phone lines rang for two weeks straight and of people relating to what I'd been saying and like, you know, the audio and stuff, if your audio person wants to put it back in, they can put it in. <laughs> That's what we do in radio. Insert audio here. Um, and like the, the, that piece went viral. So we chucked it on YouTube because we were like, how can, you know, and for me, it was like a life changing moment because I realized I had a lot of work to do to kind of love myself and like get to a point of, really being confident because I wasn't confident at all. But from that moment with all these people calling, I'd realised the power of connection. But then from that, I was like, well, fuck, how can we make this big so that it's a life-changing thing for people? And also we can, can I can continue to reach people that aren't just in Bunbury. So we got the premiere involved. We got Mia Friedman. It got published in, um, they had a radio show at the same time, which was Mamma Mia Today. It got on there. I got all these people. And for me, I worked like I worked in the PR agency every single day to bring to life what was called the um, Let It Go Swim, the Love Yourself Revolution, which I still do stuff today, Shed Your Shit and stuff, which is all about going for a swim in the ocean and kind of like getting rid of all that shit that you started. And so for me... That moment literally was, like I said, because we took something that happened, one conversation that happened on the radio and it turned into six weeks worth of content on a radio show being published in publications all around Australia, like, and then going on other radio shows and talking about it and having also like people like the Premier, Mia Freeman and all that love what we were doing and then, you know, how did we make it even bigger? We then went and got photo shoots with people and they had to get their p- parts of their bodies that they hated. They got photo shoots with that. Like, so there was all these different little things. And whilst my swim was happening in Bunbury, people were doing it all around Western Australia. We had them on the radio show. They were jumping in swimming pools. And it was kind of like the rebirth, right? And, like, I am a little bit spiritual and hippie as well and definitely people might think I'm a bit woo-woo. But it was that moment of that one piece of thing, like, that how could we make it bigger to impact more people's lives, to PR the shit out of it. And that was the moment for me. So that was 2012. And that is what I teach people now. I talk a lot about that moment. Because that moment, like I said, not only changed my life, but it also taught me so much on how we can have these moments and powerful connections with people, storytell, and then really, like I said, just have that one thing and just make it massive. I love it. So, yeah, did that make us go over? Were you like, We're oh, probably shit. well into it, but that's all right. Oh, bloody this high will be a long, This will be a long one. So, guys, if you're listening on your way to work, make sure you listen on your way home as well. Yes. To catch the end, to catch the end of it. Yes. Um, now. <laughs> but they uh, won't know that because that's won't. at the end. Wait until you know, then I'll put it in the intro. Wait and see, this is how this podcasting world now. Um, so, what, so, now, oh, for anyone that's listening. another question. So for anyone that was listening. <laughs> How can they connect with you online? Audience? Well, I would love to say go to my website, but I have website shame. And I'm currently, <laughs> it's under maintenance. Yeah. Um, so go, I always say find me on Instagram mm-hmm. at um, underscore Heidi Anderson yeah. and slide into my DMs. Um, yeah. Well, for longevity, we will put your website in yeah. the show notes. So number one, you get a cheeky link back, which yeah. is really good in the online world. Yes. But number two, when your uh, website shame goes away and it comes back up, yeah. people can find you in case they're like, oh, what happened to Heidi's Instagram? And then they go bang, there's a website. Well, definitely for the future people that watch this or listen to this in the future, my yes, website, everyone. yeah, is going to be, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> is but like, it's going to be so cool. It's literally under construction right now and it's going to be kind of like, you know, go on a, um, 
on a map kind of journey of me and it's going to be a bit interactive. You know, like choose your own adventure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Goosebumps yeah. Like it. Like it. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God. Did you used to watch those books, read those books? So good. <gasps> did you read Babysitter's Club too? My sister did, not me. <laughs> he definitely read <laughs> Well, guys, thank you for joining me and the party on this extended episode of the Kim Barrett Show. Um, make sure that you share this with someone. If you know someone who would benefit from hearing this, maybe they need to shed their shit. Maybe they need to learn how to PR the shit out of themselves. Yes. Or maybe they just need to line up what it is that they actually do first before they go and do anything. Then please share this episode with them and, uh, yeah, get amongst it. Until next time. See you guys later. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Kim. Thank you.